Okay. And uh, good morning, everybody. This is uh, Elder Charmaine Ernest, and I am called the Woman of Grace, and I'm here in Aiken, South Carolina, and we're going to be today doing lesson four of God Wants You Well. This is a study guide by Andrew Womack's ministry, God Wants You Well, and it says uh, what the subtitle is, What the Bible Really Says about walking in divine health. What the Bible really says about walking in divine health. And so that's what our focus is gonna be. Uh, we're gonna be doing these lessons every Wednesday morning uh, at this time. And uh, I just wanna, if you wanna get involved, you can uh, register for this class at a, uh, AWM, no, I'm sorry, excuse me, Karis, biblestudies.net karisbiblestudies.net click on find click on find and then click on online and you'll see my name in there because i do four classes i do this class on wednesday mornings uh, god wants you well i do discipleship evangelism on tuesday mornings at 8 30. i do believers authority on saturday mornings at nine o'clock eastern all of this is eastern time and I do spirit, soul, and body on Sunday mornings at nine o'clock. So with all that said behind us, this is a um, free class. However, it is viewer supported. If you want to give, give. If you don't, that's fine. We're going to still do what we do because God is the source of all of our what we need. So if you're blessed to be a blessing, you be a blessing. However, uh, today we're... Uh, we're going to be recording this and uh, uh, on our Zoom, and we'll put it out on Facebook because we're having some uh, technical difficulty getting to Facebook. I do have a different computer. I have my granddaughter's computer today, so hopefully we're going to have a wonderful time. Okay, I need someone to open us up with prayer. I'll do it. Father God in heaven, in Jesus' name we come to you. Lord, we just thank you for this time that we have together and such wisdom that comes across Charmaine's mouth and into our ears. Lord, please give us all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so that we could hear and learn and so that we could spread the word, Father God in heaven. We love you very much and we're so grateful. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to get started. And uh, today our class is called The Full Package. The Full Package. And we, this is part two, we started last week. And one of the things we, we, we need to understand is what is the full package deal? You know, what if, what's the whole deal that Jesus did? And it, the way it's called is the whole counsel of God, the whole counsel of God. So we're gonna do a review from last week, okay? And I'm gonna share my screen and uh, we're gonna pick it up from what we talked about. Uh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Not my PowerPoint, not yet. I want to uh, go to, so I'm gonna stop sharing that screen and I'm going to go to, uh, to my uh, study guide. Okay, God wants you well. We, we picked up, um, let me see. We're gonna do the outline for the review. When anytime I do a review, that's the only time I primarily use the outline. Can y'all? Am I sharing my not screen? Yet. No, I was just gonna say not sharing it. Okay, just one second. Okay, please let me know when I do that because I'll be talking and y'all don't know what I'm talking about. It's going. It's coming. Okay, you see it now. The outline. Okay, this is primarily the only time that I'm going to use the outline aspect of the of the study guide is when I am. Uh, doing a review. So we are doing part two today. So we're going to do the review of this uh, lesson. So I need somebody to read for me uh, this first section, section one, and just read and we can talk about it as we go. It starts with Jesus didn't just die. Um, Jesus didn't just die for our sins. And then healing was something he could do if he wanted to. This may be different than what much of the modern day church presents, but scripture bear it out. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thine diseases. Psalms 103, 1 through 3. Verse 2 specifically tells us not to forget all of his benefits. In the New Testament, 1 Peter 2 says, Who his own self bear our sins in his body, in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. 1 Peter 2, 24. We should know that one. <laughs> Both okay. stop. You want me to keep going? Yeah. And Both it, Psalms 103.3 and 1 Peter 2.24 mention the salvation benefits of forgiveness of sins and physical healing together in the same verse. As far as God is concerned, salvation is a package deal. It's people, not God, who have said, let's not talk about healing, deliverance, or prosperity. Let's just focus on forgiveness of sins. That's the part everyone can agree on. That's the main part of the atonement. All these others are just fringe benefits. Believe that, fringe benefits. Believe that's offensive to God. Okay, wait a second. Okay. Yeah, let me read that a little bit more into it. Okay. That's the main part of the atonement. All these other parts are just fringe benefits. Believe that, that's I offensive think to God. It might be a typo. It should just say, I believe. Yeah, it's it sounds funny, but yeah, I know what he's saying. This is, I'm not very good at sarcasm. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just can't. reading sarcasm. Yeah. Okay. One of the things that we want to get out of this particular section is, uh, and I'm going to stop sharing here. And I want to, uh, I want us to notice that when we talk about the atonement, when we talk about the atonement uh, of what Jesus did, okay, we we're gonna. I'm gonna start with uh, this section. I'm sharing the screen. Are you seeing it? Yes, we are. And okay, we we're gonna talk about. Uh, hold on. Let me see if I got here. When we talk about uh, the atonement, okay? Uh, tell me, somebody, when we say the atonement, the definition is basically the price paid by Jesus to repair man's broken relationship with Jehovah, Jehovah God, okay? It's, it's the price that he paid. Somebody read to us, and we talked about uh, the whole counsel of God, deals with um, how Jesus fixed the, these these four issues right here represent the four, uh, the whole counsel of God. When we talk about the full package, this is the whole package deal that Jesus did for us. And there's many other benefits, but this is primarily what he paid for us, okay? Somebody read that one. Uh, uh, read through this for me. Read the first one. Jesus' death. I'll read. Jesus' death on the cross was sufficient to cover all sin, spiritual illness. When we talk about uh, cover all sin, that means he forgave us of all of our sin. Jesus took our sin, gave us his righteousness. So the sin was what caused us to be spiritually dead. Okay? And so our spiritual illness was spiritual death. So Jesus paid for that. So his death on the cross was sufficient to cover all of our sins. So spiritual illness is taken care of. Read the second one. Uh, okay. Um, Jesus' stripes were, were sufficient to cover all sickness and disease, physical illness. When we talk about Jesus' stripes, what are we talking about, y'all? When he was whipped. Whipped. Right, when he was whipped, and it was for, it says, by his stripes, we are healed, or we were healed, okay? And so the stripes were sufficient to cover for sickness and disease, physical illness, okay? Now, somebody read it, read the next one, Trish. Okay, Jesus' resurrection was sufficient to destroy Satan's works, mental illness. And, you know, the, the scripture says that when Jesus... Uh, came, he came to destroy the works of the devil. And the works of the devil is what is, when people are being diagnosed with all kind of mental illness, 
uh, something that's taking control over their thoughts, over their mind, you know, then Jesus, he, when he resurrected from the dead, he drew, came up with all power in heaven, on earth, and under earth. So he destroyed the works of the devil, okay? So that's mental illness. And do number four. All right. Jesus' resurrection was sufficient to destroy death. And death is not a, 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 a death is a, a like a like a person you know it's like a, 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 a something that comes against us but death is what came in when sin came because remember god told him he said adam had eternal life but he told him he said in the day that you eat of this tree you shall surely die so when he disobeyed god that's when death came into the world and and but when when jesus defeated death he died, but he came back to life. He resurrected. And that was sufficient to destroy death because Jesus. the scripture says that Jesus came to give us life and to give us life more abundantly. So he came to give life. Satan brought death, okay? A Adam brought death into the world. Adam brought, uh, in, he empowered Satan into in the world. And uh, we're going to go back up here and I want to show, show you that where it says uh, the problem, okay? What do y'all think, before I go to the problem, what do y'all think about those, uh, the, those that slide with the spiritual illness, mental illness, physical illness, and eternal life? Yeah, I, I really like how it's laid out. I, I do have a question. I realize you may or may not have insight on this, but out of those four, three of them were done on the cross. And the second one, you know, Jesus took stripes for us. So I just wonder if you had any deep revelation on why did God choose, you know, to have Jesus pay for sickness and disease at the whipping post instead of just doing everything on the cross? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. And if somebody else can ch chime in, but I know that the whole process of it was the, 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 the process of the cross when he, the 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 beatings because it was a, a whipping of 39 times okay that was the the jewish law i mean not jewish law roman law and and but as to why he did it on the whipping post from the time jesus is, that whole time period was the process of him uh the death the burial the resurrection all of that his life his death his burial and resurrection was all intended for that purpose to do the whole counsel of God, you know? So why they didn't hang him on the cross and beat him on the cross, I don't know the answer to that one, you know? But it would be a good research. So something, anytime somebody asks us a question, we're going to go and we're going to research it and, and come back. All right? Is that okay, Dan? Any other thoughts about that? You know, Shemaine, I, I, I realized that when Jesus was on the cross dying, that he took all the, divide, the, the the exchange. But I never really looked at it from the mental illness part. Uh, it just, it, I like the way you broke it down and explained it, each one, you know, and what, how he did it. So I think that this was really beneficial for me to understand mental illness is, is a, a part of this healing. It's yeah. part of it. Mm -hmm. It certainly is, and uh, so the we because it, it's not just uh, physical illness; it's also spiritual and mental illness, as well as uh, God providing for us and meeting all of our needs. Okay. Yeah, Charmaine. Yes. Yeah, morning. Just to look at Dan's question, um, where he asks that. Um, why didn't that other cross cover everything and the whipping took care of our 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 sicknesses? That's what was that the Go ahead. Was that the question, Dan? That's what was that the question? Um I the way I would state it is why did God choose to have Jesus go to the whipping post to pay for our sicknesses instead in the, in of just the, doing everything on the cross. Oh, to me, it's stayed a little oh. bit differently. Let, let me add one more thing to that in case you have insights. And um, sorry if I'm giving everybody homework according to Charmaine's rules. But, <laughs> but, um, the, let's see, the verse, um, the chastisement of his peace 
of our piece was upon him. That's right. somewhere around Isaiah 53, five, correct? Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that, that was, in my mind, that was also on the whipping post. So mental yes. illness, at least in my mind, was paid for on the whipping post. So maybe I'm just, you know, looking into this too much, but both physical and mental illness were paid for at the whipping post and other things were paid for at the cross and finished at the cross. So I understand this intellectually. I just, I'm just thinking there may be some revelation, you know, yeah, that so I don't really have. But anyway, go ahead, Keith. Yes, yeah, so what happened, Dan? Under the Jewish custom, they when when they used to sacrifice the lambs, there were different lambs that 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 represent different sacrifices. So you have like peace offering, sacrifice for the sins of the people. There there were different lambs that represent these um, these different eras. So. So, like, if the the, sin, the people would sin, you would find out that there was a lamb sacrificed for that. Then they would use a priest who represent the people, who, who is a representation of Jesus in the earth, and he would take the blood and sprinkle the blood on behalf of that for the forgiveness of sins. And, um, and if it's a peace offering, it would be a different type of lamb. So you so you find out that Jesus now is the last lamb, as you know, that came. So in terms of the beating, it, 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 um, what happened in the old, under the old covenant was symbolic. So Jesus just came to fulfill all of that um, in terms of how it was broken down under the old covenant. So that's why in um, prophetically speaking, when Isaiah spoke in Isaiah 53, just as you said, um, in uh, when part of, it, it, why not everything was done on the cross? It was done. Um, remember, as I, as I explained before, when everything was done under the old covenant, Jesus just came to fulfill that in in that same manner. So that's so that's the only thing that came to my heart, um, just to go a lot more in depth. You understand? So he didn't did anything different from what was under the old covenant to fulfill the law coming into the new covenant and we 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 asked to say they were they would just use one lamb to just pay for the sins pay for healing pay for we're going to see in our lesson today because Isaiah 53 is a part of our lesson okay right. so we're going to be dealing with that today and uh so just hang in there Dan okay and and you're probably going to see some of that today so we are live on Facebook finally y'all we are live and uh, is everybody here? Is uh, are we are we frozen? No, we're all here. Okay, all right. Because everybody looked like they was just. We're kind of like I think everybody's <laughs> listening and researching. Okay, all right. So let's get back to our review, okay? Because yeah. one of the things that we're going to talk about as as we go in is going to be Isaiah fifty three. But right now we're doing a review, and we see that um, all of our benefits. Let us not forget all of our benefits. And the benefits is include when it talks about iniquities, okay? And it calls, it, that's, we're dealing with sin. But when we talk about uh, he forgave all of our iniquities and healed us of all our diseases. The point that we're making in this section is that uh, in the atonement, healing and sins being forgiven were, deal, were, were at the same time. Okay, and uh, it happened at the, t the, uh, the at the same time, and so we see here, and uh, it says Jesus, who himself bore all of our sins on his own body on the tree. Okay, that we were dead to his sins, should live unto righteousness. But it was by his stripes that you were healed. It, when it talks about uh, he. He bare our sins on the tree. That's when he was hanging on the cross. But it, it also indicates here that it, the stripes, which it was at the whipping post, was when he when we received the healing. That's in 1 Peter 2, 24. Okay? So there is a distinction as to where physically one thing happened and another thing happened. Because the, the sins forgiven, it says, he who himself bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that's the cross, Okay, was made out of wood, uh, that we should be dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, 
by whose stripes ye were healed. And the stripes occurred at the whipping post, okay? Which was, was not necessarily on, not on the cross. When he got to that cross, the blood was being shed, he had been bleeding, and all of this had been happening to him already. So the point is that for, uh, for God's people, uh, we we saw in our lesson that a lot of people are not, they don't talk about healing in the church, okay? It's people, see this section F, it's people, not God. They don't talk about healing. They don't talk about deliverance, which is uh, getting us free from mental illness, deliverance, okay, or prosperity. They just focus on the forgiveness of sin, okay? And that's, but that's, uh, when you just get, uh, like a fourth of something, then you, you're not getting all of what God provided for you. And so let's see, somebody read this sec section number two, because we're going to do these first two sections, and then we're going to kick into our lesson for today. Somebody start with section number two. We're going to do two and three sections, because that's from last week. Okay. <clears throat> Healing is in the atonement just as much as forgiveness of sins. Once you get this revelation firmly established in your heart, it'll cause you to reject this false teaching that says, God is the one who causes people to die. He puts sickness on you to humble you for some redemptive purpose and to perfect you through all this suffering. And it says, I want you to see where it says, it'll cause you to reject this false teaching. The false teaching that he's talking about is that God, want, God causes people to die. That is not God. That is not Bible. That is some man-made teaching, okay, where God puts sickness on you to humble you or to make you uh, a, a better person or to perfect you through your suffering. That is not Bible. That is that is from the, the devil, okay? It's a false teaching, okay? So we need to understand that healing is in the atonement just as much the forgiveness of sins is in the atonement. And the Amen. atonement is the price that Jesus paid for us. So healing, physical sickness, uh, mental sickness, as well as the forgiveness of our sins, all of that happened at the same time, okay? Keep, keep running, reading, Trish. All right. Jesus died for, <clears throat> excuse me. Jesus died for the forgiveness of your sins and for the healing of your body. They're all part of one complete and finished atonement. This means Jesus no more put sickness on you than he would lead you to sin. When you and understand this, go ahead. When you understand this, you'll say, I won't submit to sickness any more than I would go out and yield to sin. And that is correct. You know, when you, because uh, uh, read this last one for E, and then we're going to, I'm going to stop sharing and we're going to talk about this. Okay. Once you get that mindset, you'll start seeing healing manifest in your body. Let me ask this question. Have you ever known somebody who believed that God made them sick? Yes. A lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people think that. Yeah. Let's talk about that for a second. Is, well, that, Bible? Is that Bible? No, not at all. No, no, it's not. That is no, not Bible. No. Where I come from, um, when I was growing up, you know, I don't, I don't remember it being taught, but we all knew that uh, if we were sinners, if we were bad kids, that God could curse us with, you know, some sickness or some disease or something. Yeah. They would, they would put, they would make, they made God mean. Uh-huh. Yeah. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, it said, God is love. Go ahead, Trish. Yeah. They, you know, it's kind of like you kids be good or else, you know. You're gonna, mm. you're gonna break a lightning leg. Lightning will strike you. Yeah, you? lightning will strike you, huh, Keith? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Remember that? And you know, I think they got that from that, uh, like, like Zeus had this big lightning streak mm -hmm. on the, in the, you know, the, <laughs> the mythological yeah. Zeus. You know, that is not our God. No. no, man. Mm -mm. no man. I think you our, our God loves us so much that He sent His Son to take your sin. And to take your sickness, mental and physical sickness, and to provide you with eternal life. So it, that's not a bad person. 
No. Well, I think, you know, in the Bible, um, you know, it talks about sin, um, you know, having an effect on us. And because number one in your PowerPoint said, let me pull it up here just a second. One sec. Got it here. Oh, Lordy, Lordy. Where did my, there it is. Okay. So um, Jesus's death was sufficient to cover all our sin. And so, okay. So if we have sin, right, then we have spiritual illness. All right. But getting to the physical illness. Um, so it was related to us. Like if we had sin, then we would have physical illness almost, you know, automatically. That's what, that's what they was teaching you. They were you twisting said. it. Yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah. Because everybody's born spiritually ill. Because mm -hmm. we're born spiritually dead. Separated yeah. from God at enmity with God. The right. only way to, to fix spiritual, uh, because of sin. That was sin that brought that on. That's what Adam did. Okay. That's when, that's when death came. Death is the final uh stage of sickness yes sickness is incessant incessant death it leads to death okay so that's why we need to uh but spiritual illness you're born with that you got to get born again to get rid of it and once you get your sins forgiven you heal from that but they've te we've been taught a lot of different things and that's why for, we talked about this last week how we have to unlearn oh, man. some of that stuff. And yeah, it man. makes it hard for us, especially if we've been in church for a long time. Yeah. But, but that's why you got to get in the word and you got to focus and you got to renew. Renew your mind means to change your thinking. That's what it, renewing your mind means, change your thinking. Okay? From the way you used to think, the old worldly way, or the wrong false teachings, and now you need to begin to think the way God wants the God wants you to think. Any other can comments? I a, yeah, I want to make a point here. Um, it, it, can everybody hear clearly? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Right. Um, you know what? Why people tend to do that? Because Trish um, brought up a very strong point. Someone will come to you and say, Trish, Keith, Dan. Um, Remember that when Miriam sinned against Moses, Moses was representative of God in the earth. Jesus in the earth at the time atoned for the people, oh. uh, making a session for the people. Um, the, the, he put leprosy on them, on her, to, to, um, because of what she had done. People oh, would love okay. to bring that scripture as a strong point to, to say, you see it? God, God did that, and you know we have to be careful. But what they don't understand under the Jesus has come to redeem us from the curse of the law under the old covenant. You, you, Jesus did not come at the time, and um, and judgment has to be established where they had to atop, um, pay for the sins of their, their own sins. But when Jesus came and died, now it's a different thing. So we're not under the uh, we're not cursed under the law anymore. We are under under grace because no, we it's not a sin issue. We should be looking into our identity, who we are in Christ now. So that and, would answer the question for them. So and you're, you're, also, right, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I want to add. I want to add that we need to when when you read Old Testament stuff, okay, you need to realize that that it like if the cross was right here. That's pre-cross. Right. Okay. That's pre-cross. That's what Keith is saying. That's what he's saying. Under the law, there was no, nobody was born again before Jesus came and died. There was nobody, nobody had the Holy Spirit inside of them. Nobody had that. The, but now we are post-cross. We live on this side of the Jesus's death, burial, and resurrection. We live on this side of the atonement. We live on this side of it. So now we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, the power. We're under grace. Grace is on the on the post side of the cross. And and uh, the law is on the pre pre-cross. So you gotta make sure you understand pre-cross and post-cross. 
because something changed when at that cross. So Charmaine, is that why in Job, you know, people will say to me that, well, look at God, let Satan put sickness on Job. So why are we any different? You know, that's because, why, right? And that's right. Mm -hmm. Nobody, because you need to help people to understand. Nobody was born again before Jesus resurrected Acts, the second chapter. That's when we came in the picture. Okay. And that's post cross. So, you know, we need to understand when we read the, the Bible, you need to read it from the perspective of, is this pre-cross? Is it the, during the time of the cross or, of Jesus's life, which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the gospels, and leading up to Acts 2. And then from Acts 2 on, that's post-cross. You see? And the sins were forgiven post-cross when Jesus died on that cross for any believer. But pre-cross, they they were not, they could not be righteous. They 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 sins, they had their own sins. When they died, they went to hell. Okay? That's how that was. Oh, Charmaine. Yes, ma'am. There's a scripture for it. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, to that point, the most important thing is, and um, in the lesson, Andrew was saying it, that um, once you get the revelation firm in your heart, you would reject this false teaching because some of it came from the scriptures, but there was no rightly dividing of the scriptures. So that's basically what you were talking about. You, it has to be rightly divided because just like in John 9 and in other places, when it talks about, um, they asked them who, uh, whose fault was it or who's saying that this you know little boy or whoever was this person, this man was born blind. And then Jesus told him, you know, it was neither the parents. And then he went on talking about that the works of God should be revealed. And people think that, okay, the boy was sick. God made him sick, but that's not what it said. And then later in the passage, Jesus healed the man. So um, it's all about rightly dividing. And, you know, one of the things that... Um... We're, we're the boy's parents and neither him was sent. It was Adam mm -hmm. that brought all the problems in, you know. But another thing I wanted to uh, clarify from last week, and, and I want I tried to send it out to everybody, but I did put it on Facebook where, where it talks about we die daily to sin. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. we already did to sin, we're not dying daily to sin. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pastor, Pastor Dollar talked taught that Sunday. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Pastor Dollar, it's on my Facebook and I was trying to send it out to everybody. I think I sent it to, uh, to, to the people that was in the group that day. If you didn't get it, call me because I'll send it back out. Let's keep going with our, because we want to, we are dead to sin. We're no longer, we, we don't have a sin problem. You know, we're not dying daily to our sin. Okay. Uh, we are already dead. We have an identity crisis and we've got to know that. Okay, because uh, let's keep going with our lesson because I want to uh, get to our, our part where we are today. And then we're going to see how this goes. Somebody read number three. Okay. One reason people don't see a greater degree of healing is because they're committed to it. They embrace it. They aren't committed to it. Oh, they aren't committed to it. Okay. They embrace infirmity thinking, well, this is just natural. Even worse, many times they are told, it's God making you sick. Submit therefore, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee. Amen. The word resist means to actively fight against. How can you actively fight against the devil and the sickness, infirmity, and disease that come from him if you think that God is the one sending it instead? If you are persuaded in your heart that God wants you well, you might ask for deliverance, but you won't actively fight against sickness or stand in faith for healing. <coughs> the 
the same attitude towards sickness that you have towards sin. You got to have it because we know that our sins are forgiven. We know that we saved believers, but we have a problem when it comes to sickness. Okay. But if this scripture says, if you submit yourself to God, resist the devil, he will flee from you. So you have to actively fight against it. The enemy is the one bringing the sickness, the disease and all that on you. God is not doing that. If you And so you have to actively resist the devil and he will flee. If you resist the sickness, resist the disease, resist the infirmity, he got to go. You know, we got to actively fight against that. So uh, I want to go back to our slide. Yeah, go ahead. Trish. When you say we have to actively resist it. Okay, so that's how do we do that? So we resist it by um, speaking against it. It says, uh, how can you, in, in our lesson, it says, how can you actively fight against the devil, the sickness, the infirmity, and the disease that come from him if you think that God is the one sending it instead? If Satan can convince you that the Lord wants you sick, then you won't actively fight against sickness. You may beg and plead for God to set you free, but you won't fight sickness until you know that he isn't the author. If you don't believe, you got to believe. And the only way you're going to believe is you got to hear the word. So you, when you say actively fight against, you got to go in and, and find out what the word says about healing and believe it. Okay. If you don't believe that Jesus purchased healing as part of his atonement, then you won't resist infirmity and disease. Okay. If, it, so you got to actively, if, if, some, if something is attacking you, you got to fight, you know, yeah. you don't just sit back and say, oh, well, God made me sick. Go ahead, Miss Cheryl. It, what I try to tell people when they, um, <laughs> what I try to tell people is um, when you pray, don't ask the Lord to heal you. <laughs> Believe that he already don't ask him because he's not going to answer that because he's already done it at the cross. Right. And what we want to see is that the healing be manifested uh, it, through our bodies. Right. Because we're already healed. And so you really have to break that old mindset. Yes. Because it is an old mindset. And, you know, they say old happens are hard to break. Yeah. <laughs> and, but we have to change it, like you said, change our way of thinking. Uh, in other words, a renewing of the mind. You got right. to renew your mind to think about yourself the way God thinks about you. And you got to re resist the devil and submit to God. God wants you to understand your spiritual condition. Is your spirit sick? No. Right. And no. And one thing is that. You know, when you, uh, when you quote scripture out loud over yourself and you hear it, you know, because when, when the kids would go, they went to a Christian school for part of their upbringing and they would go to the nurse's office and she would have these swords and on each sword, she'd have a healing scripture and she and the kids would read these swords, you know, over and over um, themselves uh, over the kids. You know? And then they'd go back to the classroom and they were always better when they went back. You know, to the bathroom. <laughs> Trish. So yeah. Trish. listen to yeah, the that, Trish. So, sorry. Get it. Hold on. My, I, I'm, I'm just in the review. I got, I got to get okay. to the new lesson, y'all. We got to get to the new lesson. Okay. okay no problem. Put it in the so chat. Is, so y'all should, y'all should go back and look at the lesson we did last week and, okay. and set yourself up. Okay. All right. Uh, because I want to, before I do that, I want to go back over here. And we're going to talk about our, uh, the problem, what Adam's sin did to you. This is, this is the end of our, our review. Adam's sin disconnected us from God's life. That was immediate spiritual death. Adam's sin brought death, physical illness, sickness, and disease. Adam's sin empowered Satan. And that's when the works of the devil and oppression came in. That's mental illness. And Adam's sin produced lack. That's poverty because 
Uh, and then this is what Jesus did for you, which is sozo. And we looked at sozo last week. It says sozo is the Greek word for salvation. Yet its root meaning goes beyond just the forgiveness of sin. According to Strong's Concordance, sozo also carries the idea of being physically healed of diseases and being delivered from your enemy. In the spiritual sense, that enemy is the devil and his demons. So this is what Jesus did for us, sozo. Jesus has shed blood, sins forgiven. He healed spiritual illness. Jesus is broken body, stripes. He healed physical illness. Jesus delivered the oppressed and destroyed the devil's works, healed mental illness. Jesus took poverty. He gave us ways to get financial prosperity and blessings. You know, there are four areas to the whole counsel of God, four aspects to it. And we need to, um, hold on. Right now, most of the time in the world, in the church, this is how it's being taught. They, the church emphasizes the forgiveness of your sins. Come get saved, give Jesus the Lord, make Jesus the Lord of your life. Very little emphasis on healing. This is like 70%. Yeah. Very little on deliverance from demons. Very little on prosperity. Let me ask you, if somebody comes to the church and they say they're sick, they want you to go to the doctor. The church tells you to go to the doctor. Somebody comes to the church and they tell you, I'm, I got, I'm demon possessed, I'm hearing voices, I need you to help me. They want you to go to a psychologist or a psychiatrist. If somebody comes to the church and they say, look, I'm hungry, uh, can you help me pay my rent? Can you do this? They want to, they want to send you to the food stamp office and to the, uh, to the welfare office or somewhere. But all of this, is what we supposed to be doing, the whole counsel of God. This is how we supposed to do it, like that. Forgiveness, healing, prosperity, deliverance. Each one of you is a, is a church. Do you, when you present the gospel, the whole counsel of God, that is the gospel, you need to be presenting all of that to the people, okay? Now, uh, so now we finna get into our... Uh, our next section of our, our, our what do y'all think about that? That was our review. We're gonna we're gonna keep going on to our next section so that we can finish. It's not much we have left, but but it's our time is of the essence. Okay. All right. Let me get back over here. Okay. This is part two right here. It talks about being oppressed of the devil. Oppressed of the devil. And when we say oppressed. I want you to we I want to I want to do a definition because you know me with these church words I like to do definitions okay somebody I need you to read oppressed definition someone or a people that is being oppressed is hold, hold, typically hold on one second I'm sorry go ahead <laughs> under someone else's control or rule and they are taken advantage of and treated in a harsh or cruel way. And so it is seen as the exercise of authority or power over another person or a people and using them for their own purposes in a burdensome, cruel, and unjust manner. It is usually where the people have no control of their own lives and have no freedom and they are living in a state of bondage. I have a question. Is, uh, do you know people who are oppressed and, and living in a state of bondage in their own mind? Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. You know, they are just caught up. I mean, even if they are oppressed Satan brings oppression. He gets people, he, he enslaves them. He gets them in the bondage, drugs, alcohol, uh, uh, sickness, uh, disease, uh, uh, what? Hurt. Gambling. Anything that takes control over you. You see what I'm saying? That's what that is. You was finna say something, Dale? Yeah, I said, and hurt. You know, people hold on to hurt and 
uh, things that have been done to them in the past. People have, uh, one of the ways that the devil oppresses people and, and get them is if he can hurt you as a child, if he can hurt you as a child and, and that you, you, it may take you 30, 40 years before you can get out of that thing, you know, and you thinking wrong all that time. Okay. Let's keep, um, uh, uh, I want, I want, uh, Michelle to read this next slide for me because this is oppressed. This is what, how Jesus helped the oppressed. Okay. Oh, let, me, let me get this <laughs> out, of, out of the way. All right. Okay. Read that for me, please. Jesus helps the oppressed. Jesus came to seek and to save those who were lost. But he also came to help those oppressed from illnesses, disease, and even demonic possession, as we read in Matthew 12, 12, where a demon oppressed man who was blind and mute was brought to him and he healed him so that the man spoke and saw as many brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons. That's Mark 1, 32. Jesus declares about himself, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Hey, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's, the Lord. that's the kind of God we got. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? God brings sickness. And he, don't, he don't bring no sickness. He don't bring no depression. He don't bring that. That is of the devil. That's the whole point I'm trying to make. We need to be able to recognize that. And uh, so... Let's go on and read what this what our lesson is teaching us today. Somebody read here, and as we go through it, we're gonna do our uh, read this first paragraph, and we're gonna ask ask question. Teachers guide four a. In no. the same way that Jesus died to set you free from sin, He also died to set you free from sickness. In the same way that Christ does not lead you into sin, neither does he bring you infirmity or disease. God is not the author of the sickness that comes against you. Okay, we're going to do question, teachers got question 4A right here. And it says, in the same way that Christ does not lead us into sin, neither does he bring us what? Infirmity or disease. Infirmity or disease. Infirmity is sickness. Okay. He doesn't do it. God is not the author of that. Keep reading, Miss uh, Michelle. Okay. Acts 10. In Acts 10, Peter was preaching the gospel to Cornelius and his household. He summarized the life and ministry of Jesus, saying, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Okay, so. Acts 10, 38. <laughs> so, and, and question teaches us, uh, our, our question, our discipleship question 12 is, according to Acts 10, 38, God, what did God anoint Jesus with? And you Holy see Ghost, that? Power. Holy Ghost and power. Did he anoint you with that when you got saved? Amen. Yeah. He did. Yes, he did. He anointed you with the Holy Ghost and with power. Now, what was Jesus going about doing? Healing, healing. all that were oppressed of the devil. Yes, he was doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil. And we read that oppressed by the devil. So oppressed by the devil required healing. So it had to be an illness, mental illness. 
Okay, that's what he was doing. That's how the devil was is messing with our mind. Okay, any thought? We're gonna finish this section and then we're gonna talk about this a little bit. Comments? Uh, somebody read this right here. Notice, uh, Michelle, you finish up for me. Okay. Notice that the word says that when Jesus went about healing people, it was good. Some religious churches today think that people who pray for others and claim that they're healed are of the devil. Wow. That's contrary to what the word of God says here in this verse. When Jesus healed the sick, the Bible declares that it was good and it brought glory to God. Things that bring glory to God and draw people closer to him are not of the devil. Satan is not out healing people. Hmm. No. Nah. Jesus, uh, okay. Go ahead. Jesus, keep going. <laughs> okay. Jesus went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Notice that they were oppressed of the devil, not of God. God is not the author of sickness, infirmity, or disease. Right here is question, uh, teacher's guide question 4B. And 4B question is, it says, God is not the blank of sickness, infirmity, or disease. And it's right here, this last sentence. I got it highlighted. God is not what? The author. The author of it. Amen. What do y'all think about that? Do, I think you can drop the mic right here because it's, <laughs> it's all over. <laughs> it's all over. If you can understand, God ain't give you that. And you going to, you know, y'all talk. Say something. God is good. God I is good. It to you. Yeah. <laughs> the devil is bad. God is good. Devil bad. God good. Amen. Devil bad. Amen. Any other thoughts? It's not how to get you or say, yeah, you suffer because of the suffer because of the Holy Ghost sins that you have done. Um, I'm here to, to, to get you and teach you and ever know. Uh, I came to redeem you from this, my son, my daughter. Yes, that right. is his purpose. That's right. Yeah. That's right. God is not the author of sickness and disease infirmity. He is not. And don't, if, if you believe in that, you believe in a lie. You know, the devil brought that and you can resist the devil and he will flee. So start resisting that sickness. Start, uh, let me ask you this question. And because uh, where in the Bible, and y'all do your own research for this, where in the Bible does it tell you to pray to God for healing? It doesn't. It doesn't. God said he gave you, believer, the power just like he anointed Jesus from Nazareth with the power of the Holy Ghost and, and power to heal the sick, to do good and to heal the sick. You, you got the power to lay hands. Dan, you want to say something? Yeah, this may be a can of worms, so feel free to pass on by it. But um, you let's don't see. pass worms. <laughs> Um, anyway, you had mentioned, um, you know, receiving the Holy Spirit. My experience over the decades is there's two beliefs. One is that when you're saved, you receive the Holy Spirit in its totality. Um, some churches teach, they're call, it's called second blessing theology, as you probably know, that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a separate and distinct experience that um, some people do not get when they're saved. So my question is, those, those pie charts you showed before, you know, we can be saved and not really have everything as far as, um, you know, the other quadrants like, um, you know, right. being healed and prosperity and all that. So as far as getting the Holy Spirit and power, does that fall into like maybe the same concept as that pie chart where some people, when they get saved, they get the Holy Spirit and the power and everything, but other people, it's a second experience afterwards. Let me say this, at salvation, okay, the Holy Spirit literally came to live inside of you. The Bible says he indwells us. When he came, at salvation, okay? He came with all of his power, 
He came with all of the gifts of the Spirit. He mm -hmm. came with all of the fruit of the Spirit. Give it he came with the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit didn't leave that stuff outside and leave and give only come inside of you with just a part. His whole being is mm -hmm. in you. Okay. However, the thing that that you have to begin to allow him to take more and less of you and more of him. And when you begin to, you, because a lot of people don't even believe in speaking in tongues or don't believe in the Holy Spirit or don't believe in the power. They believe he's a force. Okay. So if you don't believe it, it ain't going to work for you. But you still got the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You got it. And he got, you got everything that you need for life and godliness inside of you, but it ain't going to work for you if you don't believe it. And he, the only way you're going to believe it is you got to learn what the Bible says about it. Because the Bible tells you that you can speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells you that. The Bible tells you that, that you can lay hands on the sick. Mm -hmm. You got it all. Even though it might be a second thing, it's the second thing is not him. The second thing is you getting to the point where you believe in all of what he bringing, he has already brought. You see what I'm saying? As you renew your mind and you grow in the knowledge of God and Jesus, <clears throat> then the, you allow more and more of the Holy Spirit to be able to, to roll through you. You know? And they just say, because they talk about, you, because you got him all when you got saved. Okay? And, but you, didn't, you may not be uh, experiencing all the gifts of him. Amen. Yes. Okay. You may yeah. not be experiencing all of the gifts and all of that, but that's because you don't know what you got. Right. I say we have an identity crisis. You need to know who you are in Christ now that you have the Holy Spirit in you. What you have now that you have the Holy Spirit in you, and what you can do now that you have the Holy Spirit in your spirit. Mm -hmm. You see. So that's what it does. You might have more than two second feeling or third feeling or whatever. You because the more you submit to the, to God and His Word, the Holy Spirit gonna be doing more and more and more in your life. You see what I'm saying? Hey, Charmaine. Yes, sir. Um, you see, you also just to also endorse on that. A lot of people what's want to clear up in this is that. Um, they believe that they still have to go and tarry as as the, as, as as they did in the upper room. The tarry means to wait for the Holy Spirit to come, and that's not true, Dan. What um because the, the, the Holy Spirit has already come. He is here. <laughs> you understand? That's so when you so right, so when you so when you become a Christian, as Charmaine said, um the indwelling spirit of the the, 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 the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. He comes and he indwells you. Have, you have all the fullness of God inside of you. So it's just for you and I now to renew that mind and receive what we have and, and walk out that ide uh, identity in Christ. Or identity in Christ, yes. Excuse me, Dan, you were talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues and all that kind of stuff, right? Well, yeah, right. because when I was saved like centuries ago, um, you know, it was taught that it was a second, the church I was in was taught it was a separate mm -hmm. and distinct spirit, or ex separate and distinct experience. But then one of the issues is that you say, well, if you don't go through the second experience, then you're an inferior Christian because you don't have the Holy Spirit. So that was one of the issues. And, you know, I've heard both sides, but I thank you for answering that can of worms question because that was a you know basically i've already you know we've already got it we just have to let it out and we have right. to understand it to let it out so we've already got it and so that's uh you know those those few words we've already got it seem to just encompass everything i mean his finished work at the cross we've already got it we just need to get rid of our ignorance know what it is and know how to release it and not believe lies right. yeah and lisa you want to say something yeah, um, I, I had two distinct experiences. And I think, you know, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit is when you, you take on Christ's identity and, and your mind is renewed and the spirit flows out. It's not just contained inside of your spirit, but it begins to be released through like gates inside of you into your soul 
your mind, your will, and your emotions, and you begin to walk in the the mind of Christ, the speak the words of Christ, live the life of Christ, and including the healings, you know, praying for people in faith and seeing things happening. And I you think, know, I think all of us, many of us have experienced it as a second st stage. I experienced it as a second stage. But, but but the key to what I'm saying is that when the Holy Spirit came, he came complete. Right. And he and I think it, now, it, it, it took time for us to renew our mind to get to that point. Because a lot of people, you don't, when you first get saved, all you know is I want salvation. I want Jesus. Mm -hmm. And you got him. Holy Spirit is dead. And he once he gets in, he begins to work on you from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I that's see. when all of these things begin to happen. But, uh, but we all experience the second thing. And, uh, and, and, and we have a class on that in discipleship evangelism. It's, it's three classes, level one versus chapters 14, 15, and 16. Mm -hmm. Go check it out. Three classes on that, what I just told you, discipleship evangelism, go check it out because we got to keep going with our lesson, okay? Because I want to make sure we finish this today. Amen. What's the chapter okay. again? Chapters 14, 15, and 16, mm -hmm. level one, okay? All right. Um, okay, I need somebody to read this next section about prophecy fulfilled. <clears throat> Dale, you read that for me? Yeah. Isaiah prophesied powerfully of the coming Messiah in chapter 53, saying, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed Isaiah three, three through five. in this in this last in this in this scripture right here is questions number 13 through 17 and the answers are in this scripture and it says uh was jesus liked and accepted look up at the first beginning was he liked and accepted of men no he was despised and rejected he was despised and rejected of men no, number 14 why was he wounded for our transgressions for our transgressions why was he bruised for our, our iniquities, iniquities. Mm -hmm. and the chastisement of what was upon him our peace and with his stripes, we are, what are we? Healed. healed. We are healed. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, uh, this is, this scripture right here is full of church words. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Cause, cause when you talk about transgression, do you know what that means? Do you know what iniquity means? Do you know? Okay. When we talk about griefs in our, uh, hold on one second. I'm gonna, before we go to this, I want to go back and read this sec finish reading this section okay and then we're gonna come back and do these definitions <laughs> okay i need somebody to read this for me right here um uh, earlier wait uh, right earlier. Here. I'm a, I'm a, i want you to read this section right here this this first little section right here it says notice i'm gonna go back up there but i want you to just read this notice Notice how Matthew in the New Testament, quoting Isaiah 53, 4, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, interpreted griefs and sorrows to mean infirmities and sicknesses. This scripture makes it very clear that Isaiah wasn't speaking of spiritual and emotional healing. Of course, okay. spiritual... Okay, okay, you want to uh -huh. yeah. go back up here first before we move on because I wanted to get those that little thought in there because that's a part of that slide. These are definitions. Somebody, uh, Dale, read these definitions for me. Okay, grief and equals infirmities, sorrows equals sicknesses, sin to miss the mark, doing something against God, transgressions 
presumptuous sin, an intention, an intentional rebellious or sinful act, iniquities, a premeditated choice to commit iniquity is to continue the sin without repentance, chastisement, the act of scolding or punishing someone, stripes, 39 times 9 equals 351, whip lashes with a cat of nine tail whip. Jesus' death on the cross was sufficient to cover all sin. When we talk about sin, okay, see this one when it talks about iniquities? Mm -hmm. This is premeditated choice. This is to commit an iniquity is to continue to sin without repentance. Yeah, and and when I was when I did that research, one of the things that it was talked about was when David and Bathsheba. Oh yeah, <laughs> because they went through. It was premeditated. They knew what they was doing. They knew they was gonna get the husband. They was gonna kill the husband. They, but they wanted the husband to sleep with her so that David wouldn't be. Uh, so David would think that she was pregnant for the husband, but the husband didn't sleep with her. So David, you know, once he realized that that his he had been sleeping with the man's wife, and the wife was pregnant, and he, and uh, and there was no way that he was gonna be able to fix that, then he sent that man back to to the war to be killed. Now this is in the Bible, y'all, for y'all wonderful people out there. There there's some very dysfunctional people in the Bible doing yeah. all kinds of stuff. Amen. That was an iniquity. That's premeditated. Okay. That's premeditated sin. Okay. So you need to understand these words and understand presumptuous. What do you think presumptuous sin means to, to do that? That's when it talks about. Uh, yeah. You can think about it. Okay. So Jesus was wounded for our transgressions, right? That's what it say. He was wounded for our transgressions. Okay. So have you ever intentionally in sin? You know you did. <laughs> you know you did. So don't even sit there. You know, you you didn't did something where you you look at it and you say, now would God want me to do this? Or would the devil want me to do this? Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> but I'm still gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. presumptuous that's transgression yeah. jesus was wounded for them sins that you did and then it says he was bruised for your iniquities yeah. your iniquities was the ones that you premeditated you you, you, you figured that thing out you worked that sin out that, that that's what that is jesus was bruised for all of our sins and the chastisement the whooping the scolding, the punishment was for our peace. You're talking about, and, you're talking about satisfying the flesh. I'm sorry, go ahead, Miss Cheryl. I didn't satisfying hear you. Satisfying the flesh. The flesh, yeah. Let's, say that again now. Satisfying the flesh. Okay, what does that mean? The flesh. Um, I know. What are you saying? It's uh, the sin, it, it's, it's oh. fleshly, you know. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. What makes me, is it going to make me feel good regardless of what God says is going to make me feel good. <laughs> but thank God for Jesus. Amen. Jesus I took all that. of that. <laughs> yeah. All of your sin, your not past, present, and future sin, right? Yep. Past, past, okay, your present yeah. right now, mm -hmm. your future. Amen. Right. Right. Amen. Okay. When did Jesus die for your past, present, and future sins? 2,000 years ago. Yeah. So your sins are all future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all of them, your sins are all future sins. He died 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. When it says past, present, and future, the, fu the it's his past, his present, and his future, Jesus. Because mm -hmm. this is Jesus on the cross. He, he lived 33 years. That's his present, right? Okay. Anybody who was from Adam all the way up to Jesus' death. That's past. Yes. He paid for the sins of those people in the past. The present, the people who were alive. Yes, Jesus true. paid for the, his sin, the sins of the present people that were still alive, mm -hmm. okay, then. Because it was 4,000 years from, from Adam to Jesus. 
So mm -hmm. all of, when Jesus died on that cross, he paid for them past sins. The present people were still alive. Mm -hmm. And the future sins is from uh, the uh, from his resurrection all the way till eternity over here mm -hmm. when the last baby is born. Where do we fit in? Were we past mm -hmm. before he died? Were we there when he died? We're future. Right. So Jesus died for us, all of our sins, all of our transgressions, all of our iniquities, 2,000 years ago. So all of our sins are future in relation to that. Any thoughts? I want to finish this section. OK, now I want to go back up and Dale, finish picking up, pick up the reading of earlier in my life. OK, earlier in my life, I always heard this passage change and interpreted to say, this isn't talking about physical healing. It's just speaking of emotional and spiritual healing. In a symbolic sense, we're all cripples limping through life because of the damage sin had done to us. Jesus came to set us free from that. However, if you study the Hebrew meanings of the words in the original language here, especially in verse four, they clearly refer to physical healing. In fact, Matthew eight describes Jesus actually fulfilling this prophecy from Isaiah 53, four. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. Matthew 8, 16, 17. I'm going to do question 18 and 19. What did Jesus use to cast the uh, spirits out? How did he do that? With the what? word. His, his word. word. That's right. Speak his word. And what else did he do with that? He healed all that were sick. All that were sick. He cast out, with, he used his words, he, and he healed all who were sick. Finish reading for me, Dale. Okay, we're at notice. Okay. Notice how Matthew in the New Testament quoting Isaiah 53, 4 under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit interpreted griefs and sorrows to mean infirmities and sicknesses. This scripture makes it very clear that Isaiah wasn't speaking of spiritual and emotional healing. Of course, spiritual and emotional healing are included in our salvation benefits but these verses are speaking specifically about the physical healing of our bodies. The context in Matthew proves this. When Jesus cast these demons out and healed all that were sick, the Bible says this was the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. In light of Matthew 8, 16 through 17, it's clear that when Isaiah 53, 4 through 5 says that he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows and that by his stripes we are healed, that is not just referring to some kind of spiritual or emotional healing. It's talking about the physical healing of our bodies. Matthew 8 commentary on Isaiah 53 verifies this powerful truth. Okay, I want, I want to finish up slicing up the atonement. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, slicing up the atonement. We've already looked at many scriptures that clearly reveal physical healing as an important part of Christ's atonement. Since it's part of what Jesus bled, died, and resurrected to provide, it's not optional. That's why it's incorrect to say, let's not preach healing. Let's just focus on forgiveness of sin. That's slicing up the atonement into different parts and saying some parts of what Jesus did are important and others aren't. Not true. All of what Jesus did for us, all that he suffered, died, and rose again to provide. I'm sorry. Is important. We're not honoring the Lord by picking and choosing and presenting a less than true picture of the message he really wants us to communicate 
we are not glorifying God by ignoring, neglecting, and or disbelieving an important part of the full salvation package he has provided. We're, we've made the gospel message irrelevant to many people because they see it as only applying to the future. They perceive salvation as having no relevance to their present day situation, which is absolutely incorrect. So uh, the, the question for 6A is, since Jesus bled, I like the way they got it here, bled, died, and resurrected, okay? Bled is the whipping post, Dan. Died is the cross. Resurrected is power, okay? And so uh, since he did all of that, is it optional? Is healing optional? Because no. he did all that for healing. No, it's part of it. No. It's part of the atonement. It's not mm -hmm. just optional. Okay. A lot of times we're picking and choosing what we want. Okay. When we are picking and choosing, are we honoring the law? No. No. You know, when we're not communicating, uh, are we glorifying God by giving, ignoring and disbelieving part of his full salvation package? Are we glorifying God when we do that? No, no. You know, when when I want to share this, uh, and I think this is very important for us. This is what, this is how God wants us to present the 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 gospel to someone. But if you present the gospel to the world today like this, don't don't a lot of people need healing? Yeah. Don't a lot of people. Oh, a lot of people. <laughs> don't they need deliverance? Many people need a lot need of people. Yeah. Yeah. But if you yes. all, all you presenting to them is forgive your sins so you can go to heaven. They haven't they living in a hell right here on earth. And yes. you seem to be teaching them the whole counsel of God. Yeah. yeah. And when you take this part and, and make minimize it, you, you you what are you doing to people? Like insulting God, I think. What do you think? Well, you you know, one of the, um, um, here I go. I'm going back to Old Testament, but it's also what Jesus said, that that to obey your father and your mother, that your days on the earth will be prosperous. That, you know, God wants us to be prosperous, even right here on earth, because basically as, as it says, we're just pilgrims traveling through. Yeah. While we're here, he wants us to enjoy the fruits of, of what's here until we see him again face to face. Yeah. But he wants abundant us abundant life for us. Abundant life, yeah. That's right. Anybody else? This is the end of our lesson, okay? And um, what did you get out of it today? Yeah, your your last statement, I'll, I'll probably trip over myself trying to phrase this, but presenting a partial gospel is almost the equivalent of presenting a false gospel. Because if we go out there and say, well, you know, Jesus forgave you for your sins, but not really explain the totality of it. Um, there are, I, I forget the exact stats, but something like 70% of people in the U.S. believe in a god some form of god and they probably believe they're a good person and they're going to heaven but only something under 30 percent of people or under 20 percent believe that there's a devil so um you know there's a false gospel out there and if we're not preaching the whole gospel we could be guilty of preaching a false gospel and i may have tripped over myself there but you know it that's a black and white way of you know stating it well, if, in, in lesson number one, I think it was, it was when, when he first introduced the whole council, if you're not teaching the whole council mm -hmm. of God, you're making it irrelevant to people. You know what I'm saying? That's what we just read here. That last, in the last paragraph, it says, we've made, the, we've made the gospel message irrelevant to many people, the church, mm -hmm. because they see it as only applying to the future. You know, when you say forgiveness of my sins, okay, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm for what? So I could go to heaven. But I, I need healing right now. I need deliverance right now. I need prosperity right now. 
but you're not teaching me that. So what you're saying is true. If you're not teaching the whole counsel of God, the whole counsel, the message, then it's like you slapping Jesus up upside of his head. You're not doing the right thing. You're not teaching the people the truth. Who would want you to teach a partial gospel, God or the devil? The devil. The devil. <clears throat> yeah, if I can add one more thing, and what I'm going to say is probably very controversial, but, you know, I know of people, I actually talked to a guy Friday night, and, um, you know, his view was, okay, the, the rapture is going to happen pretty soon, so I don't have to worry about all this, so some people, to get the abundant they don't see themselves getting the abundant life and the totality of what God has for them until they're raptured out of here and in heaven. They don't see it possible to have heaven on earth and have the totality of what God has for them on earth. And um, again, I probably tripped over myself, but some people's view of the rapture is that's when they get the abundant life. That's when they get everything God has for them and on earth. They're going to be sick. They're going to be poor. They're going to be persecuted. They're going to sin. And they just want to get out of here as soon as possible so they can experience the totality of what God has for them. And that's mm. basically what we just talked about. Yep. They don't understand the full, they don't know, they don't understand the full atonement of what Jesus did. And they need to renew their mind. They need to be in this class. You should tell them, man, come sit in this class. Look, look, go on, go on Facebook, go on YouTube, check it out. Or you start teaching him, get the book. And say, man, look, I, I'm taking this class and I need I need somebody to study this with me. Uh, let's do this on the Zoom. You 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 disciple him. You see what ah. I mean? Yes. You see I mean? Yes, you sir. You see, um, based on what Donald said a while ago, and you and to endorse on it, um, they they don't understand really what eternal life is, because as simply as in John, it's a for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life, not going to have. You already have eternal life when you receive Jesus immediately on this earth. I, I, know, I know when you die and transition, is just a continuation. So most people believe is when you die and transition into the afterlife, then you're going, then you're going to get it. But what the word didn't say that. The moment you receive Jesus, you have eternal life. And you enjoy it here, uh, and while and when you die, you transition, you continue. So you understand that. And let me say this: what you're saying is exactly true. And you need to the discipleship evangelism study guide. First lesson is what is eternal life. Mm -hmm. And what you do is actually ask, ask anybody you know. Ask them a question because when somebody comes to my class, that first for the discipleship evangelism first lesson. I ask them two questions. When they walk in the door, what is eternal life? Okay. So Dan, what is eternal life? What, if you defined it, how would you say, what is eternal life? If you're asking me, I, and this may be wrong, I make a distinction between abundant life and eternal life. So for okay. me, abundant, we have abundant life on earth. If we accept the totality of what God has, we have eternal life um, based on eternity and everything. So wrong i oh. usually say okay. abundant life on earth and eternal life in heaven but okay. they are basically they should be the same thing they because we're same. you know thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven so we should be you know living our eternal life and all that abundance here on earth okay eternal life is anybody else want to tell me what eternal life is haven't been it up right there okay <laughs> go ahead lisa I think eternal life is when you are born again, you're directly connected to God and you have relationship with him. And God actually created us to be eternal beings in the beginning. But when we're cut off from him, that's when we die. That's when the process starts. So I think eternal life is to be connected with and have relationship with God and have his life flow coming into us and that makes us live forever i need somebody to read john 17 3. this is jesus giving you the definition for eternal life okay john 17 3. jesus is talking and he is the the author of eternal life defining eternal life at john 
and this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. It is, it is to know, K-N-O-W. Now, this is lesson number one in the discipleship evangelism class. Y'all need to get that study guide, okay? <laughs> and, and it says to know. That means an intimate, personal relationship. It's the same know that Adam had with Eve and she became a, a son. Right. Intimate, personal relationship. That's what eternal life is. When you enter into that relationship with God, like Lisa was saying, that is the moment you receive eternal life. Mm -hmm. You receive it right then and there. Mm -hmm. And it says, there's another scripture that says, um, when uh, another one is when do we get it and the scripture the uh the, the the scripture is it tells you and lisa look in your book look in the scripture list in your book discipleship evangelism and because she got the book right there and yeah. it's going to say that he who has the son s-o-n has the life mm -hmm. the moment you receive jesus as your lord and savior is when you receive eternal life that's I don't have to wait yeah. until, and, and the moment I, I received eternal life is the moment I received abund, abundant life. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I received the Zoe life, okay? And so the moment you get it, okay, you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And not only Jesus, uh, mm -hmm. eternal life is to know the only true God mm -hmm. and A-N-D, Jesus, whom he has sent. You have to know Jehovah and Jesus. Mm -hmm. John 17, 3, do that. Check your, ch check your chat because uh, uh, you got some good stuff in the chat, uh, the scriptures and stuff that people have been putting in the chat. And right now, I want to offer eternal life to anybody mm -hmm. out there on Facebook that want to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. You want to receive him, you can get eternal life right now. Do I know I have eternal life? Yes. Amen. When did I receive eternal life? The moment that I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I remember my bishop, J. Douglas Wiley, man, my spiritual father. He told, he used to tell us all the time. He said, if I drop dead right now, before my body hit the ground, my spirit will be in the presence of the Lord because mm -hmm. I have eternal life. Mm -hmm. I don't have to wait to get it over there on the other side. The moment you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior is when you receive eternal life. So now the abundant life begins, the process begins. You got all, the, all that you need. So if you want that, repeat these life changing words after me. It's coming from Romans the 10th chapter, the ninth and the 10th verse. And this is will tell a person what to, they must do to be saved and accept Jesus and receive eternal life. It says, and for those of you who are are uh, uh, born again, y'all practice, repeat the words so that you can learn how to say it yourself. So repeat these words after me, life-changing words, about to happen right here, <laughs> about to go down right here, life-changing. Okay, repeat these words. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth. That Jesus is Lord of my life. That, that Jesus, Jesus is Lord, Lord of my, my life. life. And that God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. And, and that, that God, God the Father raised, raised Jesus, Jesus from, from the, dead. the dead. I now receive my salvation and my righteousness. I now, I now receive my salvation, my salvation and, my and, my and my righteousness. The forgiveness of all my sins. The forgiveness, the forgiveness of all my sins. All my sins. And my eternal life right now. And my, and my eternal, eternal life, life right now. now. And I receive my divine mental and physical health right now. And I, and I receive, receive my divine mental, mental and, and physical, physical health, health right, now. right now. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Thank Thank you Lord, Jesus, for saving, for saving me. me. Saving me. Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. <laughs> party don't stop. Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because the Holy Ghost party don't stop. Because if a person somewhere out there in Facebook land, YouTube land said those words, the angels in heaven are rejoicing right now because you just got saved. Amen.
All right. Y'all have a blessed day. Bye. I'm, I'm finna tell Facebook bye. But for the rest of y'all, hang in there. We, bye, Facebook. Tell them bye, y'all. Bye, Facebook. Bye. Facebook. bye. <laughs> so what y'all think about this lesson? It was great. Sorry, Dale. Yeah, that, that was good. Um, thank you for entertaining all the questions. Um, <laughs> Because um, I, I just find from this group and just generally from Andrew Womack's types of groups, I get more clarity. You know, even that abundant life versus eternal life. I was thinking of, you know, John, you know, 10, 10. I came that, my, that they may have life and have it abundantly. But that word for abundant life, I think, is Zoe, which I'm pretty sure is I'd have to really do more of a study on this, that that's also the word translate into eternal life. So really, I, I need to look into the Greek a little bit more. Instead of making a distinction in my mind, I need to go, go to the Greek to see the, there's probably no distinction. The, the word is, is the, the Zoe is the life. The distinction of eternal or, or abundant mm -hmm. is different, but it's life. The it's, God life, the you God right. kind of life. Because that's what God gives us when he gives us the, the Zoe, okay? It, it's our, our Eonia Zoe. That's it's eternal it. life. So oh, it's life with our Eonia eternal in front of it. So I guess the question is, is abundant different from eternal? But it is the same word. It, but the, 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 the is Zoe is the eternity. same word used in life. life. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the Zoe God life, the mm -hmm. Zoe life. If we get it, and but check it out, because uh, if you're in the Blue Letter Bible, that's the one you're using, Lisa. The Blue Letter. Um, no, I just looked up Greek for eternal life. I, okay, I and what's the Greek for abundant life? It's um, Parisian. Um, it's number four hundred five three. And the uh, usage according to the Strong's is more greater, excessive, abundant, exceedingly, vehemently, vehemently how we pronounce it. But my question is, are you, are you giving me just abundant, but if, are you giving me abundant life? Because life just, is going. Right, right. This is just abundant. Okay. Um, well, wait, let me see how this changes here. Um, hang on. It's still going to be, it's, it's like two words. But the key is eternal life is, is that R word, Zoe, and abundant life is that P word, Zoe. Both of them are Zoe. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is a word. I, I actually talked about this on another one. It's uh, um, parisos, which means abundant, but that's also the word that um, it means all around or equal, equidistant. And the way I define that to myself, at least in, I forget if it's in Thayer's Greek lexicon or where it is, but, you know, it talks about equal distance, you know, around us. So it's almost like having a sphere of abundance around us, okay, which is the picture is I get. What's the word for life? That's, that's the common denominator. The word for life in abundant life is Zoe, and the word for life in eternal life is Zoe. Mm -hmm. I think the key here is that um, if you want an abundant life, you need to be spirit filled. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and you need to walk in that baptism every day. And, and even if you don't have the baptism, baptism you're on you earth you as in heaven, right? Yeah. Yeah. You so in John, to... yeah. So to answer your, what I think your question was in John 10, 10, the word for life is Zoan, which is a derivative of Zoe. Yes. So it's Parisos Zoe. Um, abundant right. life, and and the one that Lisa had was eternal life. If we start, it was a, a it was spelled with an R. Zoe. And it's right? more of a re referring to life or lifespan. So it has to do with how we live here on earth. Are we going to walk in the fullness of God, or are we going to limit ourselves by our natural thinking? You know, but I think that we don't we don't want to we don't want to tell people that the only time you you get abundant life is if you get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. No. You get born again and you accept Jesus. You got all that you need for life and godliness. That's what the Bible says. So the process of getting more more abundance and more, 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 more. 
mm-hmm. is to renew your mind. Renew your mind. Mm-hmm. The more you renew your mind, the more abundance your life will be. Yeah. You know, but if you you can be filled with all of the power of the Holy Spirit and never get nothing because you don't believe it, it ain't gonna work for you. Mm-hmm. You don't know it. You're ignorant. You don't read the word. You you want to watch uh, high, high Andrew say as the stomach turns every day all day. <laughs> what the heck is that? You know? <laughs> but anyway, anybody else want to tell me what y'all got out of this today? Before we go, did y'all enjoy? It's confirming. It's confirming and building, you know, and this, part of what I think, and as far as Dan with your questions and with your thoughts and stuff, um, you know, not to put a damper on heavy thought, but it's kind of like, just do it. Don't even really overthink things, because sometimes I think that trips us up. You know, just walk with God and keep it smooth and just... Like, like Charmaine says, stay in your lane. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, I, I, yeah, thank you. I mean, I do both. I see it as, you know, I, and thank you for your feedback. The way I see it is, you know, I shall love the Lord, my God, with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. So my yeah. mind part is looking at the Greek and Hebrew. But my <laughs> soul part is I just sit at the Lord's feet and experience him. I just praise and worship God, you know, wildly and everything, worship God with my soul. So, um, you know, with my body, I may, you know, exercise in different things or who knows what. So um, I, in a way, I'm an extreme person. So I go extreme into my mind with the Greek and Hebrew, but I go extreme into my soul, you know, when I'm worshiping God. And, you know, I don't want to say I totally turn my mind off, but it's all, it's all <laughs> soul and emotion. So, so thank you for what you're saying. But I just, you know, all your heart, all your mind, all your soul mm-hmm. and all your strength, strength is a body we cannot love god with all of our strength if we're right. sick and diseased oh yeah yeah and, and dan bring it baby just bring it yep <laughs> <laughs> we like the input thoughts because we all learn you know what i'm saying we we get those answers and not other people out there on facebook got the answer i love it right yeah I'm no i'm not saying i don't love it i'm saying i love it yeah yeah, yeah. And for, for me the way i feel is like when i came you know, if we could turn back time to 8.30 a.m. Eastern time, I had maybe like 60% of the uh, revelation for answers. Now I have like 80 or 90%. And what I find is, you know, the more I go, it's like, okay, now I know the truth. And then God opens up something else. And I say, oh my gosh, now I really know the truth. And then, you know, later on, it's like, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? Now I know the truth, you know, and it just goes on and on and on. I mean, just getting to know God in his fullness, it, you know, it's, it's incredible. And he reveals more and more of himself every time. Mm-hmm. And let me say this, let me say this, y'all. The best student for these classes is me. <laughs> the best student. Right. Because I have to, I have to do, I have to do this, you know, I have to prepare, I have to read, I have to add extra stuff, make PowerPoints, you know, think about, and it's like the Holy Spirit. You, you now you see some of them PowerPoints. Do you think Charmaine becomes that stuff? <laughs> Holy Spirit. That's Holy Spirit stuff. You know, that's Holy Spirit stuff. So, you know, it's like, just, if you want to teach somebody, just follow this book and just start doing it. And the Holy Spirit, you're going to struggle in the beginning because I did too. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this nine years. I've been teaching these these study guides and Mm -hmm. spirit, soul, and body, discipleship evangelism, nine years. Mm -hmm. This, This is my first time doing this one. Okay. As a, as a study guide, I've read the book and stuff, and, and we've had all the classes at the school because, you know, you go, oh, you got to learn all this stuff. In this first year at Andrew Womack's Bible College, it's the, the textbook is Bible. The first year, Bible, okay? And then the second year is practical ministry, you know? So, and then the third year is, you know, you just keep going and going and going. So you learn when you do these study guides. You know, Charmaine, one thing, like you said about a teacher, we are steady more. You never learn too, you never learn enough. You never learn too much. Uh, 
as a teacher, you always have to be training and training and studying and learning, just like you said, you know, allow the Holy Spirit. Because I, I found out when I used to teach Sunday school for um, fifth to sixth graders. Yeah. I study an hour every day to bring a 45, 45 to an hour Sunday school lesson on Sunday. I, I study one hour every day. Well, one hour, five days a week, just to bring that one hour lesson to fifth and sixth graders. Yeah. Just yeah. because for me, I didn't want those kids to think I was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because kids do think, oh, that's old, that's a dumb old woman or something, you know, how they, they think. And so I always tried to study the lesson and whatever questions they brought to me, I tried to be prepared for it, you know, no matter yeah, what. You have to, you know. Uh... I'm going to give you uh, the link to, uh, and I want, I'm going to put it in the chat. And this is the link for uh, Creflo Dollar teaching on uh, dying daily to sin. Because that is a, uh, a teaching that we, we need to listen to because we, we did that, we talked about that last week. And, and when I saw it, Miss, Miss uh, Michelle, I said, uh oh, we got to put this out there for everybody. Okay. To see. But please watch that because we're not dying daily. We already did. We already did. But it's, it's worth you taking the time to look. I, when I bring stuff uh, to you, Dan, have you ever seen Andrew's uh, uh, Spirit, Soul, and Body animated animation? Mm -hmm. Um, I've seen some of the diagrams that he has. No, this is a little video on YouTube, and uh -huh. it, it, it's, it's on YouTube, and you you type in spirit, soul, and body. It's hard for you to understand, but you got to understand oh, the right wait. doctrines and the right teachings. Hold on, teachings. let me go back when and that ain't in the Bible. That. Oh, I'm getting ready to show it to you. That's, <laughs> that's Creflo. I had to pull him up to. Uh, he says what? Like he said. He said what then? Now this is the only place that. Okay, I'm sorry, but if you if you go to YouTube and you type uh, uh, "spirit, soul, and body animation," mm. animation, and you uh, watch, it's three. It's a three part video. It's 18, 19 minutes. Okay, you need to watch that. Uh, watch the one that said 19 minutes. Okay, Dan, and I'm gonna okay. put that one on in the link. For everybody here to be able to get that, okay? And uh, I'm gonna put that in the link. Hold on. Yeah, that's perfect timing. I'm doing this big Bible study on spirit, soul, and body, and the heart. You know, heart, 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 and everything. And it's um, I thought it's gonna be a small study, but it's just blowing up. So I got you. Well, when you do it, let us know about it, okay? okay. There is uh um. Uh, Oh, did I did I put that out there just to you, Dale? Okay. Yeah, not yeah you did because we didn't get it. <laughs> okay, hold on. Hold so on. when you said that about um, dying to self, and I thought of how Jesus said you have to carry your cross, or was that Paul? <laughs> but I think it had to have been Paul. So, so I thought of um, Hannah Hernard's book, Hind's Feet in High Places, and. And in one part of it, she said, the, the girl in it says, um, some call it's, you call it dying to self, but some call it forgiveness. And I, that came to my mind. I mean, that is one way that we, we do need to die to self is, is through forgiving others. When yes, they it's not dying to sin. That's the key. Because when, when we talked about it the other day at the class, right. we were talking about dying to sin daily. Because that's what they tell us, that we should die to sin okay. daily. And no, we shouldn't. And okay, so anyway, um, 